Hey everyone, welcome back to the Movie Fanatics. I'm Brayden, and today we are looking at the most weird, violent, messed up, yet awesome comic book movie I've ever seen. And of course, we're talking about 1992's Batman Returns. First off, let's talk about how this movie came about. After the success of the awesome 1989 Batman, the studio wanted Tim Burton back, and he would not come back unless he had full creative reins on it. And the studio said yes, and Burton surely put his own creative spin on this movie. Now this was my first time watching it after watching the 1989 Batman for the first time a few years ago and loving it. I decided a few days ago to throw Batman Returns in because I have always heard about how this movie took it too far, and it most certainly did, but for the same reason I love Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, I love Batman Returns. I'll tell you why. For starters, Tim Burton's visual style just works for me. This is by far my, my favorite Gotham City because it feels real enough while not feeling real at all. I feel like C Christopher Nolan grounded things too much. Yes, I know, big movie fan taking a stab at the Nolan trilogy, yeah, I've got opinions too, and I'm not a huge fan of those films at all. Anyway, back to Batman Returns. Gotham just feels like a character in itself like it should. It feels like this world that crime has gotten so bad that the police are so lazy that they just turn on the bat signal and go back to sleep. I love the feel of Gotham in the visuals. Batman Returns has made its way easily into my top 10 favorite visually stunning movies. Burton's style for Batman just works for me. Moving on to the characters, Michael Keaton is officially my favorite Batman. Michelle Pfeiffer kills it as Catwoman. Danny DeVito owns it as the Penguin. And Christopher Walken is so much fun as Max Shrek. Each one brings their own style to the character. Michael Keaton really expands his take on Batman and gives a much more subdued and tortured performance as Bruce Wayne. I like his attitude and his personality when he switches between these two characters, and it makes for a distinct and dynamic performance. His Batman is just the pinnacle of cool and my personal favorite Batman. I love his chemistry with Catwoman, I like how his personality changes from Batman to Bruce Wayne in the public eye to, Br to Bruce Wayne in the Batcave. It's subtle, but the way Keaton plays each one slightly different is perfect and something I only really noticed thinking about this film after I watched it. His tortured soul, like I said earlier, really comes out when he interacts with Catwoman and makes their dynamic interesting. Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman was a super smart casting choice, and she is awesome. She's clearly having a ton of fun with it, and I'm having a ton of fun watching it. She really embodies both characters of Catwoman and Selina Kyle. I love how the, the two characters almost merge when she gets killed and brought back to life. Her motivation in this film is, well, I don't really know why she's teaming up with Penguin. I guess to get back at Max Shrek for killing her because the Penguin has grown a connection to Max Shrek. Even with a bland motivation, this performance is one for the ages. I love the personality of Catwoman. I was talking to a friend and he said something that stuck with me. It was, free is the basis of her character. I describe her as free because she does what she wants and can't be pinned down. It's also why there's the chemistry and tension between her and Batman because she's free in a way he can't be. He went on to talk about this and he also said, she can only be seductive because she's free. That's what's so alluring. Anything could happen. Now let's talk about Danny DeVito as the Penguin. This is perfect. His mannerisms and how he speaks is great. Props to DeVito for committing to this exhausting and heavy looking makeup and prosthetics. He rocks it in this movie, and the way he acts is so vile and disgusting and just completely off-putting. It is something when you can match Christopher Walken in the insane and weird department. DeVito is just the perfect casting for a villain in a Tim Burton film. I really enjoyed his fun and wacky crew he goes around with. I would have liked some explanation of who they are, but I guess we're supposed to take it as other outcasts participating in a weird circus, I guess. Also, that skeleton mask rules. Anyway, I love how his motive in this film is layered. We are originally driven to believe that he just wants to be accepted in society and Trick helps him to do that because he's powerful. Then we find out that he just wants to find his parents, but something feels off here. Finally. We figure out through Batman that he does know who his parents are and he just wants the, the, the connections and access to information to kill every firstborn baby in Gotham to get back at his parents in Gotham for throwing him away. He's going to do this by kidnapping them and drowning them in toxic waste found in the sewer. And this movie was marketed to kids? 
No wonder McDonald's felt awkward for selling toys with, with, with their kids' Happy Meals. And no wonder parents were so offended by this movie. They took their kids to see this? This was th the next Temple of Doom. Now there's Christopher Walken as Max Shrek, such a fun character. You need one character to tie everything t together, and it wouldn't be a Batman film without a crooked b businessman who's also a villain. His character is arguably shallow, but Walken makes him so memorable and unique. His personality is great, but his motivation is very bland, and, and I didn't know exactly what he wanted to do with the Penguin, but I do find his energy plant plot just okay. It's a plot device to get other plot points places, that's it. The main one is getting Selena Kyle in the place to become Catwoman when she has to go back to the office to find some files. Nonetheless though, Walken is great and brings so much to an otherwise bland character. Danny Elfman's score for this film is arguably a little bit better than his score for the first Batman. It's definitely more haunting and emotional, and the score for the Penguin is truly brilliant, emotional, and so haunting. I love how this whole score feels more gothic than the first. It fits the visual style and storytelling of the film. I love it. Also, Burton's directing is flawless. The insanity mixed with the serious is handled perfectly. The way he directs the characters and gives them each their visual style is great. His directing of the dialogue scenes and action scenes is different and unique. I just love the, the direction in this film. Everything is handled so well. Now, I do love this movie, but it does have one flaw in my eyes, and that, and that is the pacing. I feel like it could have been done with cutting some time off in the second act. I feel like it drags out just a little bit, and it drags its feet a little bit. I would have loved some more Batman scenes. The ones we have are awesome, but the movie is called Batman Returns. But it didn't really feel like Batman is back. Also, what was he returning from? Please tell me in the comments below. Maybe it's just a cool title for a sequel. I don't know. All in all, I really do love Batman Returns. I might like it just a tad more than Batman 1989, but it's a razor thin difference. This film really did the great thing that only few sequels accomplished where they weren't afraid to go different instead of treading water. It went for it, and quoting a good friend of mine, I just love how unapologetically insane the whole thing is. Me too. This film breathed different and new life into Batman, and that's why I love it. Maybe some people weren't ready for it, but for me it works perfectly. It's the, it mixed the violence, darkness, action, camp, and humor of Tim Burton's Batman perfectly, and Batman Returns gets an A-. Thank you all so much for watching. Sorry for the delay in my Bond reviews, but they are coming, trust me. In the meantime, I had so much fun talking about this movie with you all. Please make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and write comments below about your thoughts on Batman Returns. And I will see you next time. This has been Brayden from the Movie Fanatics, signing off. Meow. <laughs>